This is Debbie Dashinger inviting you to join me and some amazing presenters aboard the Galactic Origin Celebrity Cruise to the Yucatan in December. Go to D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash cruise. That's Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. It's amazing to have you here. I have a guest who has come back today, and we're really fortunate to have him because he really brings it when it comes to the conversation. And I am sitting here with my foot shaking because I am so ready to get into this conversation. Light Beings today, back on the show, is Tim Tactics, or Tim Tactical, as you might have heard his name. He has had direct contact experiences with over 10 various extraterrestrial species, over 100 face-to-face -face meetings with the greys, and a relationship with a collective consciousness called Being Six. Dare to Dream podcast won three talk radio positive change awards, the COVR award for best radio podcast show, Welp magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it's high ranking in Apple podcasts. Big thank you to Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for sponsoring this show. They do energy work out into the world. You can become a facilitator, take their classes. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com. I have a special gift for you for those who are very interested in the idea of being a starseed. Uh, put together this unbelievable gift which is a report, a video breaking down over 19 different star seeds so you can see yourself and find out in this mind-blowing information, who are you? What were your inceptions really? Go get your gift. It's debbiedashinger.com slash starseed. My guest today, known as Tim Tactics, is a governance expert from Europe. For almost a decade, Tim worked as a tactical advisor within the covert government sector in Europe, which aims, among other things, to understand the missions and strategies of non-human intelligences on our planet and beyond. He was in experiments with exotic life forms, beings not from this earth. Tim also reports on his numerous experiences with advanced technologies, plus the mysteries of the universe. If you want to learn more about him, go to his website, all shift happily now, all shift happily now dot com. Also, in the show notes, you will see a link because Tim and I and several other notable presenters are going to be speaking coming up in a few weeks at the Portal to Ascension Glastonbury UK conference. So if you want your tickets, there's a link there. Come visit us, come meet us, come hear the presentations. It's going to be amazing. I welcome Tim back to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you and to hang out with you again. I agree. It's so nice to see you, Debbie. Uh, what an intro. Beautiful. Thank you so much for having me back uh, on the Dare to Dream podcast. I'm excited to be here. Oh, gosh. I have two questions right up front before we like get into the juice of this. I heard that you're an artist, and I never knew that you did art. What kind of art do you do and of what? Ah, oh, that's interesting. I mean, I, I I delved into a lot of different subjects, uh, especially, you know, in my free time and um, art, jazz, music, um, uh, yeah, dancing too, but but all these things that they, they fill my heart. And I, I do love, um, I do love oil paintings now, nowadays, um, but I come from, you know, the 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 pop art of uh, of of you know cartoons. I, I I enjoy cartoons. I enjoyed all these you know pop art thingies, uh, and then I went into uh, oil paintings, and um, that's what I do when I when I sometimes have free time. 
<laughs> once That's a year. Beautiful. <laughs> I love all of that. Why don't we live closer to each other? We could have so much fun. Um, I also want to catch up with you because I think you may have mentioned this to me recently, or I saw it online. Uh, what are you doing right now with Gaia and Cosmic Disclosure? Do you have your own show? Are you being brought back repeatedly to Colorado? What's happening there? Yeah, well, um, I'm, uh, I got the great honor to be on over 100 uh, Gaia shows now. Um, which is it's it's absolutely fantastic. We have um, a very very well um, rated and well working show with Linda Morton Howe, um, uh, uh, Truth Hunter, um, where she's telling you know my story and and asking and delving and going right into very profound questions. Um, it was a pleasure working with her. I, I have the deepest respect for her because she's. Um, uh, she's 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 done so much, especially for you know the 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 female standing in that uh, field, yeah. uh, which from her generation is um, that's that's uh, absolutely remarkable what she did. Um, yeah, I, I very much uh, enjoyed that experience. Um, it was very very interesting, and um, yeah, I'm also on uh, on open minds. I'm uh, I'm a lot of stuff happening with cosmic disclosure. Um, yeah, so that is that is all happening with Gaia, and uh, yeah, we got plans for for upcoming seasons and upcoming shows too. Um, but uh, that's. Uh, that's not now to tell. <laughs> yes, and NDA. Um, so I'm going to also put a little link to Gaia TV in the show notes. So folks who want to watch you, it's well worth it. They can check out Gaia TV. I'll give them a link for a two-week free trial. And so, yes, now we're ready for the meat, if you will. Um, you have had over 100 face-to-face meetings with the greys, which is a pretty remarkable thing. Will you yeah, describe that's, uh, me, how did this start? What have these encounters been like? Well, the the context about that is um, that I used to work for um, uh, almost a decade in the COVID governance scene in Europe. Um, which, as you stated very, very well in the intro, um, uh, their mission is to to understand what's going on with the phenomena of uh, non-terrestrial life forms. Uh, I was in the department of uh, for so-called exotic life forms. Um, there are different types of life forms classified uh, in in various various types, um, and uh, probably listeners are you know aware that um, there are rumors about. Uh, you know, reptilian-like creatures. We do have a lot of um, uh, traditions and lots of, um, yeah, uh, lots of mystery schools uh, and, and tribes that tell about uh, insectoids, that tell about beings coming from the stars and so on and so on. Um, these are all beings that can be kind of classified into um, something that is known from from the flora and fauna fauna that is um, on planet Earth already, but then there are also so called exotic life forms, and that is basically everything that uh, defies any type of definition um, because these beings are just creations of the universe uh, that are literally so exotic that they do not fit into any other definition. Um, and the greys might be even, you know, one of the, the least exotic ones because they are very much known in pop culture. Millions of people around the planet um, have had experiences with them, at least seen something or experienced something or, or were contacted in meditation and so on. Uh, these contexts, especially with uh, certain groups on the planet, go on since 1900, the 1940s, uh, officially. Um, and uh, uh, we did also have contacts with, um, well, I did have another program where I was in contact with another even more exotic life form. Um, but that was how it came about. And I was, um, I was, yeah, I was in these, I was in the, in the governance program and, um, was over years. It took actually four years at least, um, uh, apparently being tested, being uh, until until I was um, 
yeah, proven to be ready uh, or at least trustworthy enough or whatever um, to go into these uh, programs with ET contacts. And um, that's what I did. Tell me how it changed you. Um, how did it influence who you are, your understanding of everything? Oh my goodness! I, it it uh, it changed me in in ways, um, especially in later years, like like few years after the programs, um, that that is can only be described as like a one hundred eighty degree turn. Uh, maybe even more in degrees. <laughs> I went, you know, I was, um, I was, I was very conservative, and and um, there is a certain, you know, a certain habitus or a certain type of of lifestyle of of upbringing um, that is necessary in order to be part of these programs. Mm. Um, and my life turn around to be very honest the experiences with the grace were not uh let's say not the most pleasant ones because um even though the grace were always um it was always a very neutral type of contact it was always a very um respectful type of contact um it also came with you know looking into the psychology of of the species and the species itself um is uh, has certain, you know, certain psychological patterns um, that can be very extreme uh, when you deal with the grays, um, even though they usually have, in, in comparison to humans, uh, very, very uh, limited, very limited range, or let's put it that way, a very suppressed um, type of emotions. Right. Um, but those few emotions that they have, which is apparently... Uh, very much based upon uh, earlier incidents of mistrust and so on, this can be very extreme. So the, the contact left a certain type of imprint in me that um, was very kind of hard to handle at that time, um, especially after, you know, having, uh, you know, having my, my reality uh, shaken and, and, uh, stretched um, far beyond what I thought was possible for over hundred for over one hundred times. So that was um, that was my impression. Um, however, I did again, as I mentioned, have a second program where I met another non-terrestrial species, or at least a very exotic species, um, and that was actually very beautiful. That was very very beautiful. And um, that turned around. That turned my life around one more time because then, in that moment, I I opened myself up for the beauty of the harmony. The, the beauty of the harmony, and the, the harmony is our universe. Our universe is this um, uh, can be a place of of complete harm, harmonious and and beautiful. Um, beautiful relationships to the divine that is residing inside of us and so on. So I, I had these experiences firsthand and, and, and especially the emotions around that uh, meeting such a profound uh, being like being six, uh, this collective being um, that was beautiful. That was extremely beautiful. And over the years, the more these, these learnings um, sunk into me, uh, I would, I would, I probably would have called myself a hippie if I would have known what I would turn into back in the days. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Okay. Well, I want to go back to the grays for a minute because I don't think I've had someone on this show who could claim these kind of life altering experiences that you had. So can you talk us through that, Tim? So what is that like? Is there a room you go to where you meet them because you've agreed that's a neutral zone? Do they bring you aboard their ship and you meet with one or several of them? Do you communicate telepathically? Is there an agenda? All of that. Yeah, there is um, there is always a very strong protocol, which um, I guess in I've never completely figured out why these programs have these strict protocols. Um, I guess it is in order to ensure a sort of um, uh, controllable environment or anything. But um, 
uh, I personally never never fully grasped that. We always had to. I personally, I had to to wear a suit. Um, there were other being people uh, that had different other you know uniforms or something else. But um, I personally were wearing a suit. Um, there were protocols and so on. So the most of the so-called covert um, scenes, uh, covert advanced programs, and so on. Um, and I want to remind everyone in 2024, there are lots of groups around the planet that actually know uh, that we are not alone, that know that for over 80 years, because contact um, officially in the Western in the Western world, in the modern Western world, uh, has been made around World War II. Um, that is when ETs, uh, this, most uh, several ETs decided to make open contact um, with certain groups on the planet that they thought would be where, where they thought it would be necessary to actually have open contact. So the, the contact itself was actually already established with a grace. Uh, with being six, it was something completely new. But that also came down to an experiment in the 1940s, um, which the Germans at that time actually um, tried to communicate with a so-called spirit from outside, the Außengeist, they called it, the, 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 the mind of the outside world. And they were hoping that there is a, a designer of the universe that they could contact in order to make an end to the war. Um, little did they know that th there is a designer of the universe, um, but it is this designer uh, repels war and is not interested in, you know, giving a favor to anyone in, in a war situation. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. Um, this designer wants us to live in harmony and peace um, because that is the original design um, for a home uh, instead of a, a war zone or battleground. Um, but um, the actual setup would be that most of these, um, these advanced programs uh, actually prefer to have bases that are very, very deep underground uh, for, for, as you can think of, multiple reasons of um, security and, and classification and so on. So you would actually go into these bases, you would take an elevator, it would bring you uh, down, uh, I don't know how many floors, um, huge hangars, huge halls, um, more life than you would actually uh, assume. However, less people than you would also assume, which is kind of interesting. Um, apparently, people like to, to keep people um, a little separated in these programs. So you don't have uh, a lot of uh, friends at the, uh, you know, the, the, the dinner table or anything that you could talk about. Um, so, yeah, these, these were the this is the setup. And inside of one, when you enter one of these, uh, you know, industrial or huge, huge elevators that takes you down and opens up, you see this huge underground hangar, like multiple football fields um, uh, in size. And in these hangars, you had uh, boxes, containers, actually. They look kind of like cargo containers that you will find on a ship, uh, metallic in, in, in its nature. And in each one of these probably, I don't know, 50, 70 containers, um, they would create an artificial environment um, that was designed in order for certain experiments. Um, so I uh, was one of the people that had one of these containers. Uh, and uh, in between these containers, they would sometimes go, you know, four clips or like cars would drive uh, around there. Um, so it was it was um, quite a huge uh, place actually, um, yeah. And the and the setup would be uh, the meeting would take place in one of these containers. Sitting there, uh, you can imagine that to be like inside of a metallic cargo container, uh, no furniture at all, almost no lights, which is a psychological uh, re has a psychological reason because your nervous system will be completely completely overloaded by information once your nervous system meet a being not from this reality. So keeping the lights dim uh, will help your brain to, to uh, you know, calmly adjust um, a little bit more to what you see. If you have like, you know, floodlights, 
um, you would see your brain would see way too many details uh, and it would even more stress your your nervous system and your environment so um, uh, just one table uh, just one chair actually um, the first month almost of like uh, multiple of these sessions um, the gray being would just stand there inside of this container as like a puppet, uh, like literally a puppet. It looks um, because grays um, do utilize bodies that are actually um, not organic. They are 3D printed in a, in a certain way. They use a certain technology to print them. Uh, so the I, I'm for- sorry, are you saying that they're yeah, yeah, avatars? Yeah. You, you're meeting with an avatar and it just at some point will drop in and inhabit this puppet-like being that you see and then animate? That's very smart of you. Um, that's the first time that I ever hear someone use that word for that situation, but it actually very effectively describes the situation precisely. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the grace would... 3D print the bodies um, depending on what surface, what environment, what type of planet, what mission they would actually go into. Because some planets, as you know, higher gravitation, uh, different, uh, you know, environmental um, setups and so on. So for certain situations, you would need a different body, which is kind of interesting because uh, in pop culture, we call them grays because of their gray skin, which is something that humans like to do, uh, call someone, you know, by their outer appearances. Um, however, they are not always gray. Um, so the same species also produces uh, like emerald green and purple um, bodies and also different classes of bodies too. Um, so there are, there's a wide range of different um, yeah, avatars, if you want to use that word, um, that you can actually utilize. Wow. So dim light, you're in this cavernous box by yourself with this puppet being that will at some point animate and engage, you've got a chair, you've got a table. And what happens? Do you initiate contact? Do they initiate? How does that unfold? Well, the the interesting take, I guess, is, um, and, and very unexpected for, for listeners, I guess, is um, that the first... I would almost say 10 to 20 times, maybe 10 to 15 times or so that we just have, nothing would actually happen Uh, because you, you try to, to bring your body into, um, into sort of, uh, yeah, into, into calming your body into that situation, which never works. It it never works. I it's um, it's an intense, crisp and very strong field and i very clearly remember the the intense fear that comes from being in the room and it's an interesting take because again the the gray is just standing there it's probably not even turn on if you want to if you want to call it that way or something it is just in that room and still your body which is your the human or like your body is is a different entity than your mind um, because your body can can have feelings that might be different to your conscious decisions, right? You can feel fear and anxiety. Your body can feel fear and anxiety while your mind is trying to prepare for that situation. So the first um, at least 10 times, I would say, it was really just to get uh, accustomed to the feeling of being thrown into ice cold water mm-hmm. and it never it never is is not painful it is never not painful it's always a very drastic feeling and i can i can relate to anyone who's ever had these um contact scenarios where people literally freak out because they they had you know grace in the in their bedroom or they were taken onto ship and um, done surgery onto their bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, these people often report a, a, a strong type of fear. However, all these people also very often report that after some time, they, they can reflect on the situation and realize that nothing actually happened, nothing, nothing serious, nothing that would actually 
uh, damage their body or something. So th that was true for me too. There was never a moment where I felt threatened in, in certain ways. I did feel sometimes pushed and pulled around. Uh, that I would agree, yeah, that, that did happen. Um, but I, there was never a moment where I, where, where I literally felt, um, you know, trapped in a, in a container and feeling myself in a situation where I felt, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was always physically okay uh, in that way. I assume when you say all of this, Tim, that the government is monitoring you somehow. I don't know if they had wires on your heart or something to make sure that you are okay that you're going to make it out because that fear is very traumatic that you're talking about. Um, I agree to a certain extent. Um, I would agree to the, to what you brought up that uh, the, 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 the advanced groups would actually monitor everything they could um, very much. Yes, because they rely on collecting data. That is their thing. And they, um, I, I very much agree that uh, wirelessly, I'm not a, even 100% sure how that actually works with I never had like a, like mm -hmm. a, um, uh, how, what's these things called? Like polar uh, belt that they put around, you know, you know, for your treadmill that, uh, you know, actually measures your heartbeat or anything. Never had that. Um, however, the container itself in some way, uh, was able to to measure your heartbeat, um, and again, that's like uh, around a little bit more than ten years ago or so. Um, but even at that time, uh, there was already artificial intelligence, uh, far more developed than what is now being rolled out in public. So people need to really understand that. And we do know that artificial in intelligence and and computers are. are pretty much able and capable to of scanning uh, you know objects and and also people uh and and um getting data and information from that what's that and replicating them well that would be a different uh a different experience um but um what i actually refer to is that there was some it was not visible there was no camera inside there was no sensors there was no i wasn't uh wired or anything like that it was just a very very plain type of situation plain uh environment in a certain way um but i do know that uh the amount of data that was collected inside of that uh, device inside of that container, inside of the box, um, the amount of data is just incredibly large, lots yep. of data. That makes so much sense to me, Tim, because there's only so much they can rely on you. You are human. And also when you have an extreme emotional state happening, there's just so much you're going to recall, be able to report. So I'm sure they had some amazing methods going on so they could actually know everything that was happening at a deep level, I want to know, because I, I think we all, you know, the folks listening and watching, we're, we're into all this, right? And some of them have had experiences, and we know that the greys are known to be devoid of emotions, that they basically, over time, with their um, genetic manipulation, they thought, in their best thinking, if I take emotions out, I'll do much better as a species but however, they have found, oopsie, that's not really working so well. And I think that's also why it's very traumatic for people who are taken, I'll call it, taken by a gray, even if their soul made an agreement to be taken, that it, it's very scary. They don't know what they're dealing with. So why do they do it? Have they communicated to you? Did they communicate with you, the greys? Why do they collaborate with us? What is the perspective of reality that they're hoping to gain from us? Is it merely emotional or many deep subjects? Oh, it's it's, it's many deep su subjects, but I would very much agree with, with you, um, what you just said, because that, that fits the point. And um, uh, to my answer, I just also want to want to answer something that you early on um, asked about the, the method of contact. Um, we were I was giving uh, given a, um, a glass tablet. And, and again, that was way before, uh, not way before, but it was before Apple actually launched the first iPad. 
So um, I was there sitting in this container. I had this um, this glass uh, tablet that was um, translucent. It had two displays, one display on the top and one display at the bottom. Um, the top one was actually uh, in real time showing what the gray would actually put as input into, and it would show up in gray language, um, which um, looks a little bit uh, like Korean type of, you know, lots of, Lots of uh, different lines and circles and so on. And on the bottom, it would actually directly translate that uh, simultaneously into German. So I could actually read uh, what the gray would actually answer. And, I, and it would also be stored so that everyone else could, could receive and, and rewind the messages too. Um, yeah, so the, 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 you're actually asking a very profound question. Now, what is the agenda? Why, why are they here? And so on. And um, one of the big, big reasons for that is indeed uh, the artificial um, evolution, uh, so to speak. I personally always theorize that some of the intense fear moments that humans have uh, might come from the fact that they have actually stripped away their bodies, their biological bodies, and used now these artificial bodies, um, which maybe our body being an intelligent system uh, in herself or himself um, would actually recognize. I, I was always theorizing that. I don't know if that is fully true, but we do have a lot of evidence that when, for example, the human body sees um, an android robot, for example, or even some someone who looks somewhat similar to a human but moves in a very strange way, that is usually the stuff that horror movies are made of, right? Like... Uh, you know what what is sparking sparkling sparkling the um the intensive fear that we have when we see like uh, an asian uh, uh girl that is just standing in a hallway there is just something about that constellation that makes the human body um fear that situation uh just because the brain is recognizing certain patterns and trying to uh put them into what is what the brain is used to to see um, and if the situation is kind of awkward, strange or weird, um, usually uh, this natural type of, of anxiety, fear or fight complex would actually kick in. That was my theory. Um, the, the answer, I, I don't quite know why, why there is so intense fear about it. Um, for, for the grace, most of their emotions uh, are indeed stripped away. I, I very much agree because they came to the conclusion that it's easier to handle the universe when you do not have to take care of a lot of the emotions. Um, and I know a lot of people out there, a lot of humans out there might even agree to a certain extent. Um, however, interesting to note is that the grace actually came back to earth um, observing humanity just in order to regain and gain back some of these emotions that some humans might even want to get rid of. Um, so that is very likely, or that is one of the many reasons why they are interested in humanity. And if I can add to that, because you were asking, um, why do grace actually have these, um, these uh, very intense type of encounters? Uh, why do they appear in bedrooms? Why do they um, take someone aboard and put a chip into a person? Um, we directly asked them that and we absolutely, we did have to tell them that it's inappropriate and not okay to do so, which is kind of interesting because human intelligence would tell us that it's a natural, understandable fact that you do not appear in someone's bedroom at night while they are sleeping and, and, and observe them. Um, but the answer that they, that the grace gave us was kind of really interesting because they said, uh, well, we observed your species and we saw that it's natural for you to go into the ocean, uh, catch a dolphin, chip that dolphin, and then take track of them. So we assumed that it would be a normal thing for your species that we can do that to you too. Oh, my God. Not just dolphins. There are many animals that we do that to. And as soon as on this planet, someone notices, especially a scientist, 
my goodness, my, that you just exploded in my mind, but that's amazing. As soon as they notice that an animal is going to go extinct, they will start chipping them to find out their habits, to see what we can do to keep that species going. That is huge. So they've observed us. They, in their estimation, we're doing the same thing. And they say, oh, this is fine. Humans do this weak to another species. We can do it to humans. Amazing. Yeah, I want I want to take that even to 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 the next level, which probably would shock you even more, because there have been programs um, which we also had to tell them that it's inappropriate, and and these programs have to stop, which involves human children. Hybridization. So, hybridization, right? But also sometimes uh, on a soul level, a mother who's uh, incarnated here as a human and a father or someone else. Um, might come to the conclusion on a soul level that they want to give a baby to a different species so that this baby could have on a universal level, on the soul level, a different experience. Um, we do know that these things happen. Um, we do know that lots there are lots of cases where, where people were pregnant, uh, you know, very far advanced already pregnancy. Um, and, and then suddenly the embryo of the baby was just, out of the womb and doctors would say, oh, it seemed to be, uh, well, the German word would be Scheinschwangerschaft, which means uh, it's, it's, it's a, a seemingly pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, just miraculously the baby would disappear. So we also to ask them, what is that about? And they explained to us that, um, you know, on a soul level, these beings agree to that because they think on a soul level, they agree that these beings will make interesting and new experiences as human hybrids in, in different other ET uh, systems. However, we also said, like, did you ever think of the fact that that could be traumatizing for a mother who would not remember that she actually on a soul level agreed to that procedure? And the grace again confronted us and said, like, well, we observed your species here, too. And we saw that you do that all the time when, for example, you like to have a dog as a pet. You would go to a pregnant dog, take away the puppies and then distribute them to other people. So that was something that they took from that and brought that as an explanation to that for the habit. Oh, my God. So much to learn from them. It is really interesting, Tim, when you talk about the emotional quotient of this for the Greys. And you, I have a quote from you where you've said the Greys sought to collaborate with you to project their flawed perspective of reality, observing your responses and gaining deeper emotional insights. I'll tell you why I thought that was so interesting, because this year I found out that you have a birthday very close to mine. Um, this is true that you're born under the sun sign of cancer. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's one of the, the topics where I feel like I feel very alienated on in that kind of way. I, I don't, well, I, I'm not so big in, in these type of, I, I don't agree to the idea of being born ever since I was in these programs. I was more under the impression that we never we've never been born we always existed and you know just been thrown into into situations so that but that is my 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 personal asking how did it change how did these programs change well, me the well idea one is, of the things would be that people like yes, you and yes, I I'm, if, I'm, there's, yes. if there's any validity to it okay <laughs> we'll just put it like that but I find aspects of astrology to be incredibly valid um for me, I take all 12 houses into account, not just my sun sign, but my sun sign is cancer. I'm born June 27th, and it is of all the 12 different signs, probably the most emotional, deeply emotional sign. So I was thinking about you in this project, and I thought that is so fascinating that he would be one of the ones chosen to have these conversations for emotional insights, because if anybody was in touch with your emotions, or if anybody had a deep well of emotions, it very probably would be you. That's an interesting take. I know that um, someone from the community actually once calculated, uh, and again, I'm, 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 I, I do see that astrology is uh, has offers 
remarkable insights uh, to a degree where I'm I personally because I never looked into it um, for me it's it's very it's amazing it's an amazing insight um, but she found out that I'm I'm a triple uh, a triple cancer or something like that so I do have like multiple of them um, yeah I, I maybe maybe that's an interesting it's I've never ever you bring up something very interesting that I've I never thought about that in in a way um, yeah I, I do very much think that through these programs and um, through the environment and then also spending time with the grace and so on um, I, I don't know if my my uh, capacities of of you know my emotional range uh, is indeed that remarkably wide in, in a way, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I've never thought about that. It's an interesting take. Yeah, very interesting. Okay. Well, I'm going to shift happily now. Wink, wink. <laughs> To the B6 or the being six, you talked a little bit about these beings and there was a B6 attempt to contact the, I want to say it properly, as you did, the Ausengeist or the mind from the outside with the technology at that time. Can you talk about the experience that you had with them? Because it sounds like with the Greys, it was one way. With the being six, there was something completely different with that collective. It was a very healing and beautiful experience, uh, Debbie, to be very, very honest. One of um, one of the most beautiful things that I've experienced uh, emotionally and, and spiritually uh, in, in this life. And um, yeah, also, also um, congr- a really remarkable German because that was very, very well pronounced. Um, the the actual program goes back at least 80 years, 80, 90 years or something, um, when in Central Europe, in the middle of um, World War II, um, the ideas of quantum, the quantum universe and a quantum reality um, were absolutely the newest thing ever. And Europe, especially Germany, was kind of the, the hotspot of that new type of thinking where all the rest of the world was still, you know, still in that Newtonian type of linear physics um, where there was no thought of like different parallel versions, different realms, different realities that exist at the same time or the universe being one complex um, fractional life form or something like that. These things originated in Central Europe at that time, uh, the 1920s, 30s, 40s. So at one time in the middle of the war, um, the the Germans at that time thought uh, they might have the option or the opportunity to speak to the being that is outside of this reality. They were believing that every one of us is like living inside of a kind of a bubble and that outside of this bubble, there is one large uh, designing entity that is actually uh, uh, almost playing the cards or like um, almost like, a I don't know, moving the puppets or something like that. That was the idea in the, in the 1940s. So they really tried to get in, in contact with that for one reason and one reason only, which is advantages in, in the war situation. Um, they did not at that moment, because it, again, it's 80, 90 years, our, our consciousness has evolved from that uh, very much um, in the last couple of years. Um, but they were not aware that the design, there is a designer of the universe, but this designer is, um, is uh, not interested in, in giving advantages over uh, in, in warlike situations, because that designer is also the one who's suffering uh, from these war situations too. So whatever happened in World War II, especially in the moment when you know nuclear bombs and so on uh, got invented, also something the Germans looked into very, very much. Um, whenever that happened, uh, as you know, all realities are actually connected with each other. Even the fur- the farther, the, the most uh, you know, furthest away 
um, spot in the universe is somehow connected to this world. So everything that someone would do in, in the universe in order to hurt someone else uh, does actually hurt the universe and hurt the will hurt the designer of the universe as well. So um, the idea of finding someone who would actually then, you know, play the cards or would like change something so that someone has like an advantage in a war situation is, is absolutely ridiculous. But it was it was driven by the motivation from that time. So very like many years later, um, the technology was then prepared and, and well enough to actually bring these uh, very old plants into play. And I was actually one of, well, I was the one who was, uh, you know, uh, brought into that program. And at that time I was, I was, um, I was having, you know, it was kind of challenging because the, the, the program with the grace just ended. And after 100 sessions with the grace, um, uh, there is some, you know, a certain overload, uh, in your own reality that, that, um, feels very detaching from, from uh, what you actually are or, or whatever you think you, you might be. So uh, I was going through these things and I um, probably would have said no, actually. I, I think I, I, I rejected the, the opportunity to do that multiple times and thought like, um, I, don't, I, I don't know. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't know if I was capable to even do it at that time. However, I did it and I'm glad I actually did it because it was an amazing and beautiful experience. Uh, it was very different, uh, very different, as you said, uh, compared to what happens with the grace uh, in the setup, as well as in the emotional uh, and the, 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 yeah, the emotional depth of that situation too. Um, the setup was very similar because it was another one of these containers um, this time the container actually had certain coils and these coils would suppress some of the frequential, uh, well, the, the frequencies um, that are inside of the, the, um, the container. So you can imagine that everything is actually inside uh, like, like pearls on a, on a string or something. You can imagine different types of frequential realms. Um, humans and we are living inside of this type of frequential realm, but beyond this, not outside, but actually as an overlay. So the idea of an Außengeist, a, a spirit from outside is actually kind of wrong too. It is actually an overlay of our own reality. Um, and there are these frequencies that we can't see right now, but they exist. I always can compare that to the situation when you have like an old TV set uh, and now you try to uh, bring in 4K or 8K footage, like cr super crisp something. You can't just put that into old black and white television. And even if you can, which we could in like the 2010s, um, we were actually technologically able to put the 4K information, so to speak, into the old school television. But as you know, what will happen is you will not get a crisp 4K picture uh, or like image on the, the old school television. You will get an old school black and white image from the new footage. So a, an immense amount of information gets actually lost. Um, and that is that was also the case, but it was enough information to actually get into direct contact with that life form, a very highly evolved life form, a collective of life forms actually, exotic in, its, in, its, in, in every way of, of being uh, to a degree that it would take us a few more sentences to even explain what it is like to live on their perception of, of reality. Um, however, again, the, the experiment was successful and we were able to make first contact with what we called being six. Wow. I know that you have previously said that this being six consciousness sometimes was teal in color, sometimes red, depending on the frequency. So how did they show up? Was it just like colored energy? 
Um, so they, they were actually always um, teal, but what you're referring to is very correct because um, frequencies in the universe respond to certain wavelengths of light, as at least in this you know, uh, solar-based version of the universe where we see and experience everything through light. There are different other versions, exotic versions of the universe where you do experience your own experience through other uh, setups, other patterns. But here we do see everything through light. We do have a sun. Um, everything is emitting uh, protons. Everything is um, sending out light and taking in light on a, on a constant basis. Every, every body, even, even a stone, even a plastic would do that. Even a black hole uh, does that. So what happens if you, if you compress or expand frequencies, um, they would actually take on certain colors, uh, just as much as, you know, when you when you take the 4K footage, put it in the black and white TV, you would have black and white television, even though the footage is actually multicolor stereo uh, <laughs> or I, I even it. more. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they would always appear blue to me and to everyone else. Everyone who's on our wavelengths would appear, uh, would see them in blue. Potentially, if if we have the same type of situation, they they perceive us in a different, very different way. But if it was the same thing, if it was just a human on the other side and we had the same situation, they would see us in red. They would see us in red, uh, red tones, just as much as when you look into the sky, the sky right now is not actually blue. The, the sky is only blue because there are certain frequencies that come in and the radiation and the sort of the way um, the, the outer layers of, of Earth actually uh, stretch these frequencies that and also the cap uh, capacities of human eyes that makes the sky look blue, even though it's, it is actually not. Um, same thing happened with being six. They were blue. Uh, and later on, you know, lots of listeners will know that um, we do have a, a variety of blue skinned uh, holy life forms across the planet in the Indias, in, um, in the Sumerian uh, areas and, and uh, uh, in the South America and so on, too. We do have we all we do have all these life forms that have blue skin. Um, and I did learn that being six was one of the the um, you know the contacts that these people in India, for example, they saw them in meditation or even in person. Because what happens naturally, you mentioned Glastonbury. Glastonbury is one of the many spots around the world where energies and frequencies naturally compress at certain times. Um, what then happens is that this would open portals or even overlapping situations where if you use that and utilize that in the correct way, which humans have very much forgotten about, at, at least the Norm Stream world, um, these beings, being six, could then appear in front of them in Egypt, in Glastonbury, in India, wherever, uh, in Germany too. We have a conference in Germany, which is actually one of the spots where they where they could appear. Um, they would see these humans in in blue with a blue skin, uh, and they would actually tell them about their very much philosoph their philosophies and their perspective about the universe. Oh my goodness! This. Tim, it's going to be painful to let you go. I know I have a very short couple of minutes left with you. And I just want to say for my own brain, <laughs> I have a whole nother conversation to have with you. So let's just say I'd love to do a third interview. I love that. <laughs> Always happy to be here. You create an amazing uh, environment, amazing feeling for the guests. And uh, I love your questions. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Really so much. Wow. Have you listening to you talk about this? And I'm so curious, have you ever experienced interdimensional portals, stargate travel, time travel, anything like that? Um, well, no, actually, well, there's like two things that I've, um, actually experienced. Um, one of them is 
more or less like a, you could put that into some of these definitions. I, I don't think I do have uh, words or the German, like any language on this planet has actually words or concepts, what, what happens. But mm -hmm. one of these things that happened to me was one very conscious effect where I was invited with my consciousness to, to delve into, into their perception for once, which, um, which was a very interesting take. So it would take me to, a level, to their level of, of perception of the world, like a flash that would just come over you and um, uh, you're outside of your, your own perception, outside of your own consciousness and inside of someone else's uh, perception, realizing that there is no actual difference. So while you and I are speaking here, um, even though it seems like we are different characters and the plants been behind me are different, uh, different objects, the reality is that there is no borders, there is no limits in that type of way. We all, all are in some way, um, for example, connected to being 6'2", as, as we know that they are a huge collective of beings. They do not go by that name, by the way. I want to I emphasize that because um, that is a name that, you know, uh, these groups have, or the experiment has given that life form this name. Even, not even that name, because that is something I translated from ah. German. So, um, uh, yeah, I want to make that very clear because um, uh, these beings or um, these contexts, these life forms, over so many thousands of years, we do have different traces and and evidences that there were contacts uh, with them and they always went with different names they had different names in egypt in south america they had different names in the indias um and so on and so on mm. well um i'm gonna grab these last two things from tim and then he's going to drop off and i'm going to end the show myself and give some information uh, and it's really based on, if you guys are interested, go check out the first show I did with Tim Tactics or Tim Tactical, because unbelievable, very different information in that show. So, Tim, you are speaking at Portals to Ascension, Glastonbury, UK. What are you delivering? Because I know I'm coming to your presentation and you have an after conference talk. What can people expect? And I also do have uh, uh, our own conference, which we're also going to do. So the, pr the next month are going to be pretty packed, actually. Um, well, Glastonbury, um, I, will, I will definitely uh, talk about my story. And I, I think people will, you know, um, enjoy the opportunity. It's my very, very first, um, you know, my very first appearance uh, in, in a in, uh, public setting like that so it's my first conference ever like i've never even been as a guest to any type of conference because i do not come from the world of ufology or spirituality i come from a different background so it's my very very first um appearance uh i'm going to talk about what we just talked about but um i'm i'm giving people the opportunity to ask questions because it's it's a very interesting and enlightening situation to to know um what these other aspects of the universe what these other exotic life forms are actually thinking about how they perceive the universe um but in my um in my after conference uh talk uh which is um i think on the month yeah it's on monday um i'm going to dive into the question that you actually ask very much in this uh, in this context here. Um, you ask how much did that change and how, me and 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 what did I learn from that? So the it is about the practical applications of ET contact. We do know that ET contact will happen. It's inevitable. Uh, these realities will overlay and do overlay and will show themselves in a certain amount of time. So the big question is. What does that do for our personal uh, individual consciousness? And what can we already apply to our lives? Um, and that includes, you know, perspectives about your body. That includes perspectives about what is even possible in the universe with the setup that you already have. Without anyone, you know, bringing exotic 
technology and without any magic or anything else, just by what you already have, what would ETs tell you how to prepare your body for ascension, for a spiritual, for a spiritual life, for what is possible with the setup you already have? Um, this information, I want to make that very hands-on to. I want to um, guide people into a new understanding so that when they, uh, you know, leave Glastonbury, um, that they, you know, can start working on, on their environment, on their, on their life, on their reality um, with, new, with a new mindset, with new ideas, with new orientation. Because all these ideas, all these, um, all, every type of information that helps us uh, in that way um, all these things are kind of rare and exotic and definitely not taught in schools or public media. So it's important for that. Uh, also, in October 16 to 21, um, we in Germany go to a very much uh, a very spiritual place, the Extern Stones, um, which is actually one of the places um, you asked me if I have uh, ever experienced portals or anything. This is a highly spiritual area where portals are actually possible. This is the original area where the Germans have commit, you know, committed all these um, uh, or tried all these, these, um, these experiments. Um, the first time they experimented with time travel and so on in the 1940s. Um, that is the exact area. Why did they do it at that in that area? Because this is where certain energy lines around the, the planet are actually crossing, and it's a very high, uh, energe highly energetic um, area. What we want to do in this All Shift Happening Now uh, conference, uh, and I'm being joined and happy by uh, to be joined by um, Sarah Brexman, Cosme, Debbie Solaris, um, who you and I, you actually brought me into. It's, it's kind of funny because she joined our team and um, she's she's joining us for that conference live in person too. Kedrich Olsen, uh, Sarah Zula is there. Um, multiple other other um, people that um, that have a certain function there. What we want to do and what we want to achieve is that everyone who's been an, on at the big uh, All Shift Happening Now conference, whoever goes home from that, uh, should be at a new level of reality. I really want people to be at a new level of happiness, of reality, of confidence. Because ultimately, the new realities are all already here. They lie, they are beside this. Re they are inside of this reality, and all we got to do is come to a point what advanced projects call the convincer moment. And the convincer moment is the moment where you can't just deny that a reality happens. Is it? It's the moment when you look at a billboard and now you can read. Uh, the letters because um, in school you've learned how to read. It's the first time when you ride a bike and you can never unlearn riding a bike anymore. These are convincer moments. So I want people at the All Shift Happening Now conference to experience these convincer moments that their life and their reality has shifted to a new level of happiness. Woohoo! So if folks are interested, go to allshifthappilynow.com. I'm going to see you, my dear, in a few weeks. I cannot wait for the adventures ahead of us. And thank you. Please, with my blessings, go do your next assignment. And I'll finish out the show myself and send you the links when we're done. Guys, stay with me. Um, and as, as we bid Tim much love and adieu for all he shared with us today. Unbelievable. I literally, when I'm done with this, I'm going to go back and write up all the questions. As an aggregator, this is what I live for. Someone, a journalist, essentially, for this information. And so I'm going to be writing these questions for our next interview, whether it's this year or next with Tim, it's going to happen. I really adore him. And you can see why he's such an incredibly articulate and good, good, good human being who's had extraordinary experiences. So if Glastonbury is calling to you, it is this place of ascension, as he was saying, where the frequencies come together, it is a sacred site where Yeshua has been, where Mary Magdalene has been, Joseph of Arameth, and the Holy Grail 
I mean, it's really got some unreal history to it. And there are places, it's very close to Stonehenge, there are places where things happen. I will be speaking while I'm there about shamanism, about extraterrestrials, and about where they intersect. And it, it, God bless exactly what Tim said, because part of my mission and calling is to talk about this is coming. It's not theoretical. I have it on very good, very good um, advice from some people in the know with extraterrestrials that this is coming this contact, not contact like we've known throughout history or like some pockets of people or locations have had. This means undeniable, open and happening in our lifetime. So I will tell you why shamanism plays such a huge, important role in all of this. I'm going to put the link for the Portal to Ascension Glastonbury UK Conference. It's in the show notes, so you can join. I think at this point, there's 150 to one, between 120 and 150 participants coming from around the world. So if this calls you, please don't wait. You wanna get your ticket for this. Uh, next week on the show, another amazing conversation. This one's gonna be with Tamara Calder Richardson. She is known as the evidential psychic medium. She is the Southern version of the Long Island medium. And Tamara is a six time near death experiencer and also a Christ and angelic channeler. Otherwise, is there anything else to let you guys know about um, for the show? Well, I can tell you that coming up, there's going to be, this is like the time of the year where new people start funneling into the show. Guests who have not been on before, extraordinary conversations. So I'm excited about it. I also, much like Tim, have an unbelievably jam-packed experience coming up in the next couple of weeks going to Glastonbury, coming back, being home in LA for one day before I MC and speak at the online Lirin conference. And if you're on my newsletters, I'm sending out those links. So if you're not, go to, you can go to debbiedashinger.com slash starseed, get your gift, or just debbiedashinger.com. There's, there's gifts everywhere for you actually, but get on the newsletter. So you can start seeing these conferences and events coming up. Then a few days after the Liren conference, I am emceeing and speaking at the Portal to Ascension Awakening Conference. This is 11 days. I do not know how Neil Gore put it together, but the speakers he got for this, like a dream team. So that's going to be unreal for 11 days. We're delivering this and people are coming aboard. I'm not the only MC. Uh, there's several of us sharing this duty because that's big for 11 days. And then in December, I'm on the cruise, the Galactic Origins cruise. Unbelievable speakers there too. I'm excited. Like this is going to be unbelievable stuff. Debbie Solaris is coming back to the show coming up, by the way. She and I have become quite good friends, the two Debbies. And so, yes, I had introduced she and Tim, and I'm glad they're up to miraculous things. So Deb is coming back because she's part of the Liren Conference. And uh, I wanted to have a pre-conference conversation with her like, okay, she's doing a presentation, but I have questions. <laughs> I, I've got two very dominant things that show up every time I get a reading. Daughter of the Elohim, that's the most dominant. And right under that is Lyra, 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 as a lioness being in many incarnations. And I have questions about that. So many questions that I don't even know people would get to. So as an aggregator, I'm going to have that time with her and with you because you're going to be privy right in the front sheet, sheet, street, sheet, seat, <laughs> seat on the street, and you'll get a sheet. And that's only if you subscribe. If you're listening to us on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, subscribe, like, follow, listen. 
That's your gift you can give to me. That's your gift you can give to humanity. If people are searching for this and they put in these words in the search engine, I would love them to find this show for what I deliver to you for free all the time for 17 years. And um, there's so much more yummy stuff coming up. I'm going back also to, I've been invited back to Gaia TV in January to again do a show with George Nori on Coast um, Beyond Belief. And then that show, that means it'll air six months later. So around May or June, that'll air for you in 2025. And then in February, LA Conscious Life Expo, I will be there moderating and speaking on Friday night. So this is and then I'm also being interviewed on many platforms. So please, I love your support. And I have some incredible programs at debbiedashinger.com slash shaman. So if you're ready to heal, like Tim was talking about the importance of getting our emotional beings, our physical beings, our mental beings ready for direct contact with benevolent extraterrestrial beings. And he already explained how incredible an up-leveling and uptake that is for even the best of us who are very excited for this. So shamanism and our practices do this. I'm a certified shamanic practitioner. If you are ready to experience massive healing, debbiedashinger.com slash shaman. There are programs for you. I do these live. There are online programs you could do at your own pace, but you will receiving be receiving a healing every single week. There's gals who have worn aura rings to the classes and said, I'm telling you, I meditate and I do all these amazing things. My aura ring has never shown my state at such a blissed out, like where we should be operating from all the time state. And every class, her aura ring showed that. There are other people who have had issues that have been healed because of some of the ceremonies, the rituals, and the processes we did. Um, I could go on and on. There's tons of testimonies there. But the, if this feels like a great direction for you to start aligning and getting ready for this, please do. I am so grateful to be connected with you all. Thank you for your support. I read all of your comments and I just want to end the show with this beautiful quote from Gabrielle Bernstein. True abundance isn't based on our net worth. It's based on our self-worth. So thank you again for joining myself, Tim Tactics on Dare to Dream and leave us a comment, subscribe, like, follow, tell a friend this is unreal, and I promise, as much as you love Tim, me too, I am going to bring him back. And y'all, your worth, that is your abundance, and you are worthwhile.